A Florida high school student is defending herself after her improved SAT scores were called invalid. The second time that Camila Campbell took the test, her score went up by more than 300 points. The testing company called that result invalid, they say, because her answers were similar to those of other test takers. But Campbell insists she did not cheat. Joining us now is Camila Campbell and her attorney, Benjamin Crump. Great to see both of you this morning. Thanks so much for being with us. So Camila, let's start at the beginning. The first time that you took the SAT, I think you got a score of 900. What did you think of that score? What was your plan after that? Um, that score was just a basic baseline for me. I just took it to get a feel for how I was so I could know my strengths and weaknesses in the test. So from that point, I just knew, okay, well, I needed to work on this, I need to work on that, because it let me know what was my weakness. Okay. And that's what her high school guidance counselor told her to do. To, to take a base, so that you, the guidance counselor suggested taking the test for the first time without any prep whatsoever to get a baseline. After mm -hmm. you got that test yes. score, which is not, let's face it, an impressive test score, you then, as we understand it, you took online classes, you got a tutor, you got yourself a prep book that so many other students used, and you took the test again. And what score did you get that time? Um, I got a 1230. Which is really impressive. That is just an impressive improvement. And then you heard from the testing company, and they said that your test was invalid. And I mean, your results were invalid. And what did you think of their conclusions? They didn't really give me a basis on why they think it's valid. They just um, basically said that I improved a little too much, so it's kind of skeptical. So I was, I was confused. It was it wasn't fair. So I just wanted to know more information. Mr. Crump, here's what the College Board statement is. Uh, they say the students' scores were placed under review because of significant evidence of score invalidity due to substantial agreement between your answers on one or more scored sections of the test and those of other test takers. In other words, they're not saying that they flagged it because she improved. They're saying that they found something suspicious between the answers that she had along with other test takers uh, in the way they all got either questions right or wrong. Allison, this is one of the, well, they're saying two different things, but the story keeps evolving. But this is one of the most un-American things that I have ever seen. You are guilty until proven innocent. I mean, and worse than that, you are not told the specific allegations against you. I mean, criminals get more due process than our children who have to be accountable to this SAT educational testing service, this private corporation who tries to sit in determination as the measuring rod for human achievement and academic uh, excellence. She studied harder than she's ever studied in her life. She focused more. She sacrificed more. She checked all the boxes, did everything right, but yet she is now being accused of being a cheater. Yeah. And why? They say, oh, you just have to take our word for it that there's something that we see that's wrong. Yeah. No, you, you know, they need to tell us. Well, here's one of the things that they said to us. They give CNN a statement. This is the third um, full screen graphic that we have. Another piece of evidence that can be reviewed in a score validity analysis is the student's answer sheet. And for example, whether the student's scratch work in his or her tes testing booklet shows calculations or other notes as legitimate test takers commonly have, or whether the booklet is blank. Camila, do you, do you remember taking notes? Do you think that that would help clear all of this up? Um, I don't recall. I believe some test work I did take scratch work off of, but when you take the test, they let you know beforehand that your scratch work will not be graded nor noticed. Hmm. Um, they, they, one more thing, Camila. They say that they suggest that you take the test again. Do you, can you do that? No, she's not no. going to do that. It, it is unfair to ask her to do that. Just like the movie Stand and Deliver, they want these students to be accountable to them, but this system is not accountable to anybody. I mean, it's so 
such power and authority that they wear arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. I've gotten calls from now over 15 parents around the country saying they did this to my child too. They try to beat these young people into mm -hmm. submission. Well, this time they're going to have to be accountable yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, we've talked to her congressional member. There's no oversight for this private corporation that has all this power to yeah. decide the future that's, of our young people. That's a great point. Very quickly, have you heard from Oprah? Is Oprah trying to get involved in Camila's case? Everybody has been reaching out to her saying that they stand with her. And so right now, she's focused. This time is of the essence, Allison. They're making decisions whether to accept or reject uh, her. And the scholarship process, she uh, uh, has a single mother household. Yeah. This is real to them. This 1230 makes a big difference whether she's going to get into the college of her dreams and whether they can afford it. Absolutely. We understand that your dream is to go to uh, Florida State University. You want to major in dance. And we will be following your case, Camila, very closely because we want to know what the resolution of all of this is. Mr. Crump, Camila, thank you very much for the update.